Hey, good morning, everybody. Ted Haggard here from beautiful Colorado Springs, pastor of St. James Church here in Colorado Springs. Hey, uh, what a great day, Sunday mornings. What a great time to worship the Lord and grow in his word. This morning, we are talking, we're, we're going to be uh, discussing some of the ideas out of Mark 4. Now, why Mark 4? It's because we at St. James Church use this Bible highlight booklet to guide us through the entire Bible every year. And uh, so it lists, like we're in the month of June right now, so it lists the month of June, all the days in the month of June. Right now, we're in the life of Christ. We're on the 21st of the month, and that's Mark 4 which is the parable of the seeds. And so, so that's how we know what we want to study that day, unless, of course, the Lord leads us to do something very, very specific. All right? So every weekday morning at 10 in the morning Mountain Time, we have a Zoom meeting where we study the scripture of that day. Actually, we don't study, study it. We discuss it. And so some people spend some time, an hour or two, some of them, studying the commentaries and things like that so the discussion is informed. Other people talk about what they feel about the scripture, what they're thinking of it spur of the moment. But you would be welcome to join with us for that discussion. And so if you would like to join with us, it's at 10 o'clock on Zoom every weekday morning. So you go to zoom.us. And then uh, if you've never been there, you've got to sign in. Please use your real name. And then go use this ID number. You can jot it down right quick or it's at the bottom of your screen. It's 719-338-0079. Now, if daytime meetings are impossible for you, every Wednesday night, we also have a Bible study. It's a discussion format. Don't feel pressured by that. You can have your camera on or off. You can have your volume on or off. So you can participate if you would like, or if you would rather just observe, you're perfectly welcome to do that as well. We just want you to join with us. All right. And so so if you order one of these booklets, then I'll send it to you. And then you'll know exactly what the scripture is that we'll be studying that day. And you can join with us to order the booklet. You just text me at the number I already gave you, 719-338. 0079. Tell me that you want uh, the Bible Highlights booklet mailed to you and uh, send, of course, your name and address. We will not put you on a mailing list. We will not solicit anything from you. But instead, we will send you the Bible Highlights booklet, and that's it. Then it's up to you. All right. So we'd love to have you join us, as I said. Now, we're in Mark, the fourth chapter today, and we will be studying the idea of seeds and them growing in a harvest. Now, some of you listening to me right now are discouraged. Some of you are depressed. Some of you are angry. Some of you are disappointed. Some of you, life is not working out the way you thought it would. Others of you are full of optimism and life and hope and faith, and you're just so excited. Some of you can see the blue sky and the beautiful clouds and the wonderful scenery and green grass and rabbits and squirrels and hear the birds singing. Others of you are in a gray, dark, depressed world. All right. No matter what your situation is, the word of God will work for you. But it's dependent upon your heart. So some people hear the word of God, and they're just disgusted with it. Or they have chosen that they know more than the word of God, so they don't believe it. Or they've decided that uh, they want to believe certain portions of the word of God and not other portions of the word of God. But you see, the Bible is made up of 66 books written over a period of 1,500 years that reveal the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and reveal the God that is the ultimate supreme God of the universe. Now, there are other spiritual forces. There are demonic forces. There's the devil. There's the forces of bad ideas. There's the forces of lies and deceit and hypocrisy and despair. 
But you can trust the word of God. The word of God was written, as I said, over 1,500 years. And so it's primarily written to the people he was, it was written to at that time. But you can extract from it moral ideas and extract from it how God deals with people. It's primarily stories. And you can see how God deals with people so that you know how God wants to deal with you. But I guarantee you, God formed you in the womb of your mother. You are the right person alive at the right time to do things that God needs done. But it's your decision whether or not you will allow God to do those things. All right. And all of it is contingent on our heart's condition. So if we're betrayed, some people get a hard heart. Other people get a soft heart. If we're wounded, some people get a hard heart. Other people get a soft heart. If we go through a trauma, some people get a hard heart. Other people get a soft heart. Now, here's what's interesting about this. That's not random. We decide. We decide the condition of our heart by whether or not we'll forgive or not, or whether we hold a grudge or not. We decide the condition of our heart, whether we get judgmental or not, or whether we get arrogant or not, or high-minded or not. We get to determine how we view life, whether we get bitter or whether we get joyful. We determine, see, and some people say, yeah, but I've lived a hard life. Go to any nursing home, go to any retirement center, and you talk to 10 or 12 people, everybody's lived essentially the same life. They've had disappointments and they've had pleasures. They've had betrayal and they've had satisfaction. They've had successes and they've had failures. They've had choices to make and they receive the result of those choices. All right, so all of us have more power than we think we do. All right, now here's what Jesus taught about the word of God working in our hearts. He says, beginning, let's see, I am in Mark, the fourth chapter, beginning in verse 15. The seed, that the seed is the word of God, so it's either hearing me right now, or it's you reading the word of God, or you coming to a, a Bible study. The seed fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message, those who hear the word, only to have Satan come and take it away. In other words, those of you with a real hard heart, it's like putting seed on a sidewalk. It can't grow. It doesn't matter if it's wet or dry. It's not going to produce anything. So if your heart is hard right now, you do what you can to start, start softening it. In other words, I would say, start to pray, start to forgive people, start to maybe go to a good pastor and ask him, what can I do to soften my heart? Maybe it would include some prayer and fasting. Maybe it's including you giving your life to Christ and you being spirit filled full of the Holy Spirit, discovering God's plan for your life. All right. But if you have a hard heart, if you're just sneering at this and you don't want to go to church because they're a bunch of hypocrites and you don't want to have anything to do with godly people because you're, you're, you're so much better than them. Well, maybe you need to humble yourself and get your heart clean a little bit. Soften your heart a little bit. Do something kind for somebody. Then it says the seed on the rocky soil, rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. So this is a core decision that you and I make. We believe the Bible no matter what. And it's a good interpretation. We don't, we aren't foolish with it. We understand it's a book written a long time ago. So some of it applied to those people and doesn't apply to us. Some of it's a moral exhortation that would apply to us, but others of it is a traditional thing or maybe a hygiene thing or something that has been taken care of since then. But we've got to decide what kind of people we're going to be. And so here we've got to develop roots. So I've decided all things work together for the good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So because of that, no matter what happens to me, I look for the fingerprints of Jesus in the midst of that. 
and I take responsibility for my portion of it, and I forgive others for their portion of it if they violated me or insulted me or were rude to me or arrogant or mean or or unkind or whatever. Because my role isn't to have expectations of them. My role is to make sure I've got deep roots in the heart of the Lord. In 2006, my wife and I and our family went through a very difficult time. I never blamed the Lord for that. And I never blamed the men and women that had to respond to that. That was my responsibility. And at the same time, I never was angry at the Lord at that because he didn't do that. I did that. All right. So every one of us have opportunities like that to make choices. And and always there's a temptation to blame others. Always there's a temptation to criticize. But if we refuse to do that, see, when you blame somebody else, you give them power over your life. You're saying, Jesus isn't your Lord. They're my Lord. So if you think some other race is in charge of you, you've just empowered that other race. If you think some other gender is in charge of you, you've just empowered that other gender. If you think some other financial group is in charge of you, you've just empowered that other financial group. I'm never going to do that. Jesus Christ is my Lord. Jesus Christ is the one that I love and serve. So I have deep roots in the word of God because I love the way the Lord protects me, guides me, and leads me. Then the seed that fell among thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life, the lure of wealth, and the desire for other things so no fruit is produced. See, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want the difficulties of life to destroy my faith, but I want to be this guy. And the seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, and 100 times as much has been planted. Listen, I don't raise money the way the others do. I don't live a life the way the others do. I don't, I drive a 2004 Subaru. I live in Colorado with a bicycle on the roof of it. I love the life the Lord has given me. I don't need Cadillacs. I don't need a Lexus. I don't need a mansion. I don't need to live in a gated home and I don't need an airplane. But I serve people 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and my roots in Christ are deep because I've decided. Jesus is my Lord. I'm not going to be bitter. I'm not going to be care, uh, overly concerned about things of this world. My heart is in heaven. And see, that's God's plan for you too. But you get to determine what, what the condition of your heart is. You get to determine if you're bitter or glad. You get to determine not other circumstances, not the way other people treat you, not your bank account, because as you get closer to the Lord, you learn to serve. And when you learn to serve, you learn success and prosperity, or you learn how to value heaven and not the things of this earth. You can be godly, whether you're poor or rich, you can be godly, whether you're powerful or or just a servant of all. Actually, you're more powerful the more you serve. And so every one of us get to determine this. So I would encourage you, come to our Bible study. Seek the Lord with all your heart. If you're not in the Colorado Springs area, go find a good life-giving local church. If you are in Colorado Springs, come on over to St. James. And, And all we are, we are a gathering of the gratefully redeemed. We are not a gathering of the self-righteous. And so anyway, the Lord is for us. Our hearts can be tender and we can be moved by him and moved by compassion and empathy toward others. Let's all pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you and we thank you for your word. Cause your word to go into us and change us. Father, help us not have a hard heart. Help us not respond to a stony heart. Help us not respond to a heart with thistles and weeds but instead be able to multiply and produce. In Jesus' name, amen.